we took it like a mindful way to do the city and like understand it for what it is. So I want people to really see the whole city, not just like one part of it. Um, so I've been that welcoming committee just by like my own personal kind of like give back. Cause I, for me, it was like, I was welcomed into the city by many people and to pay that back is important. This is where it all begins. So say goodbye to all your fears, all your doubts. This is where they die. This is where we come to win, we come to fly. This is where we make our dreams come to life. Welcome to Innovation City. Welcome to Innovation City, a podcast featuring the innovators, creators, and disruptors who are fueling innovation in emerging cities across our nation. Super excited. My co-host, Miss Leanne Buchanan. Hey, everybody. And our guest today is Chris Adamo. Hey, everyone. Good Welcome. to see you guys today. Well, Chris, this is long overdue. It is. And it was, as we were saying before, I cannot believe you haven't been on Innovation City yet because I think you, of all people, really embody what this, this show is about. I'm honored. Thank yes. you. Thank you. So we're going to talk about the many hats you wear, because there are a lot, including the one on your head. <laughs> um, but I want to dive in to who you are. And I guess my first question is, how do you describe yourself to the world? Not the titles you hold, but what you value and who you are. I mean, I'm a bridge builder. That's what I do. I help people from worlds that don't meet, meet. That's when magic happens. You know, we have networks that cross and mesh together. That is just beauty and what it's meant to be. And that's how we all can kind of grow up as a world. So that's number one. Bridge builder. I think that isn't the most accurate description because you're always like, hey, do you know this person? You guys should know each other. The ultimate connector. And what I love about the way that you connect people, it is so um, altruistic. It is always that you should just connect. There's no agenda no mo it's just very very natural where did that come from i don't know well i do know my dad okay. my dad we never discussed money it never was a thing we were pretty poor as we were young and we never really like strove for like money it wasn't it was about like, how can i like actually like you know do good and help people around us and build a community because a real community really takes care of you mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter how much money you have people around you will end up working in some manner. So I think most folks don't have learned that lesson. It takes people sometimes forever. And that's why you see people get very fun, like older, they give it all away because, oh, they've learned their lesson finally. Like I don't need all this stuff. So, I mean, that's, to me, I have a hard time making money actually. I give it all away anyway. You know, I invest in startups, I invest in people, I give it to charity. Um, but sometimes it just comes back to you. So the more you, you put into things, the more you get, get out of them. It really is true and I think all things. Um, and in business too. People want to do business with folks that they actually really like. So that's the first thing you could do and everything that you probably have towards, you know, life. Yeah. I think trust is everything. Um, a little anecdote that that I'll share. Um, having met uh, Chris's father, he ended up at a barbecue at my house oh, and he just started having conversations with the with the with the teenagers <laughs> and had like a great like in-depth like connection with these teenagers who are part of the Nia project and just really seemed to have such an authentically good time and a lot of and what i what i noticed from that experience chris was most people wouldn't take the time to really have a deep discussion with a kid normally it's you let me find another adult but he was really just kind of engaged and i think that speaks a lot about him and also about you know how he raised you yeah she's a genuinely great human i mean he passed away in july it was a tough summer for me but i've learned so much more in debt than i ever learned during life so there's something to be said for that. You know, I don't think that when our souls pass away from the physical form, they live on in this like other form. It's really wild. Mm -hmm. um, and he taught me so many lessons in those months after he passed away that I, I didn't really learn until he was gone. Um, and I think a lot of us, sometimes it's too late to learn that stuff, but it's not. I got 40 years more, I think, ahead of me to kind of do good with that. So, um, yeah, really great dude. Definitely. So it's an amazing experience to have. Interesting how like some of those, sometimes it takes the, you know, the person leaving our view to really understand the impact. Can you share one of those lessons? Um, you know, I learned a thing that they call it a life review. I'm not sure if you heard of this thing where when you, when you have a near death experience or you pass away, you have this like insane, like life review about how people felt about you, how you made them feel, not about what you did for them, how much money you made, how cool you were whatever did you know in like work it was like how did you make someone feel 
deep down inside. And that's what I learned is like, that's what you have to strive for. You know, the golden rule, do as you want to have done to yourself. And if someone has that interaction with you and they come around and think, man, I feel good about, my, about myself. And if you can do that all day of your life, man, you're just winning, just winning all day. So let's talk about how you take that <laughs> into the work that you do. Like, give me like some practical examples of how, because I can tell like you're in, you take your energy, you bring your energy with you everywhere you go. Yeah. I mean, I do biz dev basically for my whole life. Like <laughs> my, my friends, my family, my work, it's what I do. I help me help people make connections, you know, build partnerships, you know, build that bridge, you know, whatever it could be. If you're raising money, if you're, you know, trying to find a new client, if you're trying to build a new nonprofit, if you're trying to make a new event series, whatever it is, it's all about the how important is this for both sides who are part of this thing? And if it's not a match, you should know it up front. Like I kind of really think about who I talk, put in touch together. Like it's not it's for a reason. It's not just like, oh, you know, let's just like hunt for things for just to hunt for them. It's not how things go in life. It's like it has to have a reason behind it. So, you know, when I invest in a startup or if I join a team to work with them as an advisor or my, my current company I've been with for six years, um, it's always because it has a greater good around, but behind it. And, and it makes sense. It's almost meant to be. And there's probably some credibility that comes from just previous interactions where it's like, okay, if Chris is recommending that we connect, like we need to connect. Yeah. It's not spray and pray. It's like really like the less you do, the more you do actually, it's like, this is a very important talk to have. So we're going to do that. You know, and like, you don't need to have a thousand combos. You can have just 12 at that point. And then if three of them work out, those are the most important three ones. Talk to us about your hats. <laughs> what you wear in title. This one? Well, I mean, I'd love to know about that one. This and you got we got to talk about the shirt at some point because everybody's got to understand the story. The but shirts let, are amazing. Let's start with, like, what are the titles that you hold? Yeah. I invest in a lot of startups, so angel investor, I guess. Um, I work for Where By Us and Letterhead. I head business for them, help them, you know, find new partners and raise money. Um, you know what the new tropic is, obviously. It's part of Where By Us, so our network of but newsletters. Our view, but our viewers and listeners don't know, oh, so okay. give us a little bit <laughs> well, more context. if you're in Miami, you should read the new tropic. It's a great <laughs> publication, daily email all about Miami. Uh, we have several of those around the country. Um, and we've since built a back end to live on. So most creators and people who have email lists kind of, you know, don't have a full back end to do business through them. So we decided to make that for ourselves and we've made it live actually in December. So that's brand new to the world. It's doing great. A lot of old school newspapers use it to like turn the newsletters into business models that before it was kind of left behind to sell your own ad space, to also sell memberships. Um, and now we're kind of taking it to folks who are starting from zero to one. So that whole creative world is like, I want to, you know, have more of an intimate relationship with, with your fans. It's through email or text. That's really it. You know, social media is great, but it's, it's get lost in the shuffle a lot of times. You don't own that interaction. So um, we want people to have their audiences really be, you know, seeing what they're putting out, you know, at all time. Yes. And miss things. <laughs> exactly. And I think the other thing, and, and, and Chris knows this, for at least five years almost, I wrote a weekly blog post that I think at this point now goes to about 15,000 people. And a lot of folks would say, I actually open your newsletter because I want to see what you're writing about. And so this idea that email is not dead, no. that it is really a way for you to show with more depth who you are, and you can also make some money by curated ad space. Mm -hmm. And so I'd love for you to share just a little bit about how you view curation because you've curated experiences, you curate connections, yeah. you're looking at how do you curate ads, like how do you see that process? Yeah, I mean, you kind of like got, got backtrack and think who's this really meant for and like your niche audience. So, you know, that's what you kind of build around, like who is this, who is the person that's gonna really enjoy us the most and who's it meant for and design around that. And don't try and be everything to everybody. We tried that in the early days, like try and do everything, like you can't. You really can't get to everything. You can't read everything. So, like, really make it direct and actionable. And don't be, you know, you don't need, you need a 20 page email. You probably only need like maybe five or six things in it. Um, so, brevity is really important. Uh, and then, you know, things that are open to all and inclusive, that's what you want to share most of it. Because if you can't get into a thing, like, I don't want to have FOMO. I want to know if I can do it. Yep. So, that's been for us is what we kind of like take on to like make it a thing to, to, to not make FOMO happen. Like, you should actually do this now. Um, and, you know, I think it's a good equalizer to have your own owned audience to do that with. And you should grow together. And, you know, they can fund you, you can fund them at the same time. So when someone buys a sponsorship, they're part of your world at that point. They're not just an advertiser. They're actually, you're, 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 you're vouching for them. So that's how we see our email kind of like audiences look like. They're all kind of like symbiotic. Talk to us about the shirts. <laughs> These are jam shirts out of Hawaii. Uh, I've been wearing them every day since December 1st, 2016. 
Um, they're just great to live in. They're comfortable. They're made of Japanese spin rayon, and they're they're great. Um, they're colorful. People love them. Instantaneous. Uh, something to talk about. So you yeah, always have an easy business card to use. Um, I kind of did it at first just as like a social experiment to see, you know, can I have an easier time in the morning getting dressed? Just I'll wear this in my uniform, more colorful uniform than the all black from my New York days. Uh, and then my five months, my dad had like a crazy like disease where he lost his memory. And he didn't know who anybody was anymore, but he knew my shirts. So I'm like, I guess I'm stuck with these things forever. Mm-hmm. You guys remember back eventually, but the shirts are here to stay forever. So, yeah. I didn't know that aspect. Yeah. 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 He had no more short-term memory. It was like gone for like a good, good year. That was two years, two and a half years ago. Well, it seems like you know a thing or two about personal branding as well. <laughs> it helps. <laughs> it does help. I mean, it's really good to be spotted whenever you're at some place. So, I mean, building a personal brand is about that. Like, what is your one thing that you're really going to help the world with and, and be known for, right? You know, you, again, don't do everything. Do one thing really great. You know, I think what I do is help people make, make folks have connections they wouldn't have before. So, like, that's what the shirt can do sometimes. So talk to me about your greatest challenge right now. Right now, uh, uniting people. I think uh, right now Miami is top of mind for me. All the folks that are coming here are new. I want everyone to have a great experience here. I want them to really see the full city. I want them to experience it as we all know and, and why we live here. You know, I, I'm a transplant, you're a transplant. I don't know if you're a transplant too probably, I'm guessing. I, I am, I'm not here full time, oh, but okay. I, well, you're so here. I transplant a lot. While you're here, you're, you're a Miami. <laughs> um, and you know, we, we took a, like a mindful way to do the city and like understand it for what it is. So I want people to really see the whole city, not just like one part of it. Um, so I've been that welcoming committee just by like my own personal kind of like give back. Cause I, for me, it was like, I was welcomed into the city by many people and to pay that back is important. Uh, and I think Miami is a great place right now to kind of like see the future of every city in America, what, what it could look like. And uh, we can get there. Like, you know, we're, we only have a hundred years under our belts, which is nothing compared to everybody else. So like mm-hmm. we can rebuild and build better and with new people who are here with new ideas from their places. So let's get them in the mix. Let's, let's open the door for them to be in there and feel comfortable by saying things that maybe they in the past were uncomfortable saying to their other people in their cities. So show them that opening. I want to dive in on this idea of uniting across difference. Um, because Miami is a welcoming city, but it's still a very segregated city. And interestingly, I don't think we've ever talked about this, but my experience with you has been the differences don't matter, right? You run in any circle, you connect with anybody, and but that's not the case for a lot of folks. So how do you create environments where we are really celebrating diversity but really being inclusive? Because you actually do that uh, very authentically. Yeah, it takes someone to like give you an olive branch to a different community. And it takes a very intentional way to do that. You can't just like throw someone in a mix in a place they've never been to. They have to have some like guy along them. It's like, all right, this is what it's all about. All right, this is what, you know, if you've been to breakout things before, you've heard of Not yet, but not I've heard yet. about them. And I've it's been invited. It's a really great um, <laughs> trip. You do, you do it do a different. We did it in Miami twice, actually. We come to a city, maybe like 100 or so change makers. They come see a city for like what it is, all the good and bad that's happening, how it's changing and evolving. And you meet such a diverse set of the city where you, like, you really met someone from every part and you got to know what their life is like. You have a, you're in those shoes for like a couple of hours. And like that for me has been a eye opening thing. It's like you have to take the time to like put yourself in that uncomfortable situation. Like, all right, I know nothing about this world and I'm going to listen and I'm going to learn. And most folks don't know how to do that. They don't have someone to take them on that trip. So I've tried to create those experiences for people themselves. So. I think what you said is important to elevate that it's not as simple as dropping someone in an environment, but curating their experience and guiding them along. Because sometimes they need someone to kind of be that uh, Sherpa, if you will, mm-hmm. help mm-hmm. them navigate um, some of the landmines, the, the the potential roadblocks, and also the connection to really help facilitate uh, people meeting. I guess the next question I have for you is what would you do if you didn't have to work? <laughs> I kind of would do what I'm doing right, now. Right. I mean, I, I don't I have the dream life. I really have got the dream life. Like I'm still working on myself a lot, but like my dream is to have full carte blanche to like make all day other people's lives better. Impact them, I call them like micro impacts. Like one email can change someone's life. Mm-hmm. And if you can do that all day, man, that would be great if I could do it all day. I have some jobs I gotta do. Some things you don't wanna do sometimes, but you know, um, it's work. Uh, but I would just do that all day. Really, I would spend my time just like being that like power of good 
I kind of do it most of the day, right? Yeah, <laughs> but I got babies to take care of and, you know, I got responsibilities. So that takes a lot of work out of you. Um, and having babies gives you so much presence. Like, you need to be present when you're around a baby. So it's taught me a lot about, hey, be in the moment, you know, other stuff can wait. This is true. This is true. I have three. So yeah. I, I love this. I want to hit on this travel idea. Well, I'm, I'm thinking travel. Like, when we're talking about, like, curating, you know, like, experiences in a city i'm reminded of nia Mm -hmm. and how you know your tagline is travel awakens leaders but you think about like if you travel to a city as a tourist you're just going to hit up the tourist destinations yeah but when you go and you're and you have an you have like a local so we've my family and i have traveled to taiwan but we had local people that were friends of the family that we could stay with and they could take us around and the experience is completely different. Yes. And, yes. and that's kind of, you know, what I'm feeling when you talk about the curation of experiences in a city. So on that, when we think about Miami, we know the business case for why Miami. Yeah. But talk to me about like your Miami, as my daughter would say, are you going to Miami? Can I go to your my, your Miami? That's what she says. Well, this is a layup question because this is why we started the Nootropic in the first place. So yeah. talk to me it's about just your, like, your That's why we started Miami. the company. And our dream is to make one of these in every city in the whole world. It's like, what do I read to get me plugged into the real city? What's happening on the on the ground floor of all the places around the, the area? Like Not just the one central touristy spots or the coolest, you know, high flashy stuff like that's not what the city is real that's one part of it you know you go to south beach that's one part you know there's 37 municipalities in the city so you have to really dig a little sometimes you go to some other cities but we're lucky we have the new tropic here so read that um <laughs> <laughs> that's the first step you can do and the neighborhood uh, guides the neighborhood guides are great you know, those are a little older we had to refresh them um but that was our goal is like can you have someone and i think now through letterhead we can do that is have someone take on that city and give an inclusive summary of what's happening every day. It wouldn't take more than a couple hours a day, two hours a day, and you can make money on it. That's a monetizable audience, so pay your own salary. That's still our dream. Like, so much taken on, even by neighborhoods. Like, you should own the music of a city. You should actually be a newsletter. Like, mm-hmm. it's an easy thing to do. Who has Whoever has the, the information, just put it on paper and show someone the full breadth of what's happening around. So you mentioned Where By Us and Letterhead. Yeah. Talk to us about those companies. Yeah. Well, where we ask is all the newsletters that we own and letterheads, the back end that they all live on. Okay. So that's the, that's kind of how they, they break up. So the new tropic is one of those newsletters. Um, and letterheads now the platform for you as a creator to sign up and start doing your own newsletter. And th- and this is like a big thing right now. Yeah. With top of mind with con like budgets for content, local creators, mm-hmm. essentially every agency and brand wants to do something that's super localized. Right. And they want to have it, you know, be like a one off, like special snowflake. And that's actually what you can do it is through newsletter ads because you can make them easily customizable and have the person write to do it for you. And then also make events like it localized has been so hard for so long. This is actually a much easier way to do that, to like make an impact in a city, you know, make your campaign come to life, hopefully in an impactful way for like who's reading the actual thing. So, you know, we've been trying to push this for like a long time. It's been six years now. We've a little, little early on that, but now I think it's like the, the right time for it to, to actually like shine. I want to talk about, you know, timing could not be more perfect. I remember when Nootropic was, or whereby else was an experiment of different events and it was for curious locals and yeah. kind of like this I miss those days. I do miss I remember recess. Yeah. So sidebar, they used to do like <laughs> this fun thing in the park and they awesome. do like the adult like um uh games during recess, during work hours, and you go out in the park and have fun and do like great. that whole like you know, parachute. We need it back now. Now's the time. It's like, man, we were so ahead of like, like now it would be like very well People attended. Would love it would it. blow up right now. Blow up. <laughs> We've been talking about it. Like, man, if we had some more time, bring it back. Bring all those things back. Plug for that. Miami Land needs to come back. That yes. big celebrations of neighborhoods. We need to bring that back. Arts and drafts was great. Oh my God, I used to love that. It was painting while you're drunk. Can't beat that. <laughs> Just really cool, fun, human connective experiences. And I'd love to understand um, if you could talk about this. You've been with um, the team at Whereby Us for a long time, like yeah. pretty much since really they were getting up and running and they've they've grown substantially. Talk to us about what it's been like as a core team member to navigate a fast growing um, uh, company that has been venture backed and has rolled out now a platform around um, and, and really shifted their business model. What are some of the lessons 
and insights you've gained from that experience? Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> Pivoting a business is really hard. Uh, you basically have to do two jobs at once. You know, it's not easy. So I don't envy folks who do that for their businesses. Some of them do great and some of them don't do great. Uh, we're going to do great. So I'm excited about it. I, I think it was a smart move for us to kind of like do this platform model. And it helps our own businesses. So, you know, there's a lot of delicate things to work on when you do that uh, with existing team members and the new ones that will come on. Mm -hmm. So culture sometimes can get shifted or, you know, lost, yeah. especially now they're all remote. You know, that's a hard thing to keep, keep, keep happening. Um, but now we're back in action. So happy that we're back in the world. We're all vaccinated. Thank God. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a pitfall to watch of as you will kind of like pivot and scale into a new company is like, you know, can you keep your culture together? Can you have the people who have been there for a long time mix with the new folks in a very good way and then have them be collaborative, too? Because me, I'm very open. I want to do it all person. I want to like really help everyone across the team. So like if I have an idea, I want to share it. But sometimes you get overloaded with those ideas. So you got to really pick and pick a time and place when the ideas be presented in the right way. Um, I was taught that by working on this team, actually, how to do that in the right way. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that stuff that gets thrown at the wall, you got to like wrangle in for the right time. Um, yeah, it's just very delicate. It's an amazing experience working in startups because there's so much uncertainty, but there's also so much energy and there's also so much passion. And it is probably the fastest learning environment you're going to be in just because you have to be um, both reactive, responsive and intentional all at the same time in different minutes throughout the day. Um, and speaking of time, I don't know if you've got the time. It, it wrong, is that time. But, you know, it's that time. Oh, yes. For the lightning round. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> I was just like, let me wait for it. Tyler, you go first. All right. What? He, he's cheating with questions now. I, I, I'm prepared. I'm I was prepared, I'm prepared too. No. I read 80 questions before this interview. Well, let's see if you read this one. Probably what not. is something that's extremely popular right now that annoys you? Oh, my God. <laughs> I did not read that one. <laughs> Well, I, it's funny. Like I've been off social media basically since July. I got back on Twitter a couple, like last month, basically, and uh, I have been annoyed by like the instantaneous thing of social, of like the nonstop s scrolling and FOMOing. And I, I think we have to figure out how to like wrangle that in. Uh, I don't know how, but it really drives me crazy. Um, I see all my friends and family; they're sucked into it, and I'm like, oh, I hope my kids don't get that way. And like, you know, go live, be present. You know, don't your friends are doing things. I get it, but go, go find them. Don't just watch them. So, yeah. Who is someone that you met in your adult life that has had a significant impact on who you are as a person? Hmm. I mean, my wife really has changed my life. It's been, it's been 12 years now. Uh, and she taught me just so much about how to be a better human and a better person. And I learned a lot from my dad too and my mom about, you know, being a whole person, but she next leveled me. Like how to be philanthropic, how to give your time, how to care for others, how to build a family, like all these things I was like freaked out about having kids. It was like, I don't want kids, you know, no way. And then you have kids like, I want kids. <laughs> <laughs> so she taught me to like, just like, hey, just like take a step back, accept it, think about it. Let's observe what you're thinking yeah. before you actually go and act on things. And that's something I've been working on my whole life. I didn't know that, like to like take some steps back, listen. So why do I think that? Okay, I can take action on this now. Mm -hmm. Being present really, it's kind of what it's all about. And then being grateful for everything we do have, you know? That self-awareness and ability to have introspection in each moment is such a, a great skill to acquire. And she's an amazing person. So. She is an amazing person. I love you, Randy, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> intro music for your movie. What's your What song would be your, your <laughs> intro? Yeah. Well, I played baseball my whole life, so I knew that. My my song was Welcome to the Jungle from Guns N' Roses. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Classic locker room. For the batting. <laughs> yeah. I think now it'd be different though. Yeah. I think it'd be some like classical music actually. Some like really deep present music. I got a song for you. I'll play it afterwards. But um what is what is your most embarrassing moment? I actually did this the other day. I'm doing hypnotherapy. Have you heard of this? Yeah. It's amazing. So it took me back to my most embarrassing moment. I was 10 years old. I was playing left field in a baseball game and it was the last inning. I just pitched the whole game and my arm was killing me and it took me out, put me on the out. I never played there my whole life. I missed the last ball that scored the winning runs. We lost the World Series and I was 10 years old. Wow. I was so embarrassed for like years from that. 
to like to this day it still like sticks in my head like, i'm gonna fuck this up oh can I, sorry <laughs> okay good yeah it's, it's crazy how wow. that will stick with you 30 years ago that happened that was still in my head of like i'm gonna screw this thing up you know and like i just got past that so the confidence that's what it's all like the things that stick with you like ruin your confidence yeah unaddressed trauma and, yeah and hypnotherapy is a great way to unlock these things that are quietly behind a lot of the patterns that you see in your life it's super important to like talk to people about these things and most people do not talk about mental health especially as an entrepreneur it's like you just gloss over it just like work 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 wait a minute how about me and what's going on this thing right here uh but yeah hypnotherapy has been amazing for me to like really drill into what's my in subconscious thinking and what i'm just forgetting about all the time unlock and unlearn i love it copyright that, that. Be a book. copyright it i love it um final question sure I probably already know what your biggest regret is based on that. So how about, <laughs> how about uh, one person that you would want to spend an hour with, have lunch with, living or dead? Uh, dude, Oprah. Oprah. I mean, she has changed my life. D d d this summer, listening to her podcast has been life-changing on just being <sighs> present and having gratitude and, and making space. Um, her stuff with Eckhart Tolle was really, for me, it was like a life changer. It was like just a light bulb moment that took me 40 years to realize. It was just nuts. It's just like, listen, just take a step back and like understand and how being present is just all you need. And ever since my dad passed away, my life has been a positive change from, from, that, from that month forward. And Oprah has a lot to do with it. So Thank one day, you, Oprah, Oprah. Hey, let's hang out. I'll take you on a tour of Miami if you want. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be great. Chris, how can people get in touch with you, whether it be social media, website, subscribe for the newsletter, all of the above? Yeah, uh, I'm at Chris Adamo at every social handle, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Uh, and then subscribe to the News Rob, like if you're in Miami, for sure. Get a feel for what's happening in here and also if you're in Orlando or Pittsburgh or Seattle or Portland, hit me up. I'll help you out. <laughs> Well, this has been such a good conversation. Chris, thanks for doing this. Long overdue, but I learned something new about you, and it's always great to have a great conversation. Totally. This has been awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Innovation City. If you like this episode, you can find more episodes at innovationcity.co or anywhere where you watch or listen to podcasts. Please subscribe, rate, and review, and we'll see you next week. This is where it all begins, so say goodbye to all your fears, all your doubts, this is where they die.